Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Plavchan. I'm a professor of astronomy at George Mason University, and I'm here today to answer your questions about the solar eclipse today. Uh, just so you know, I do some work for NASA on looking for planets around other stars. We call those exoplanets. And over the past 25 years, we've discovered over 3,000 of them. So the first question comes from Mrs. Potter's class. How close is the moon during an eclipse? Well, it's not any closer than it normally is. It's about 240,000 miles away. That's far enough away that it would you could cross the United States about 100 times back and forth just to equal the distance between the Earth and the moon. That's pretty far, uh, and uh, we haven't been there as uh, mankind, humankind, uh, since uh, the 1970s. And maybe, in your lifetime, uh, we'll be sending people back there. From Mrs. McIntosh's class, we have, why is it called a solar eclipse? Well, eclipse is just a fancy scientific word for shadow. And so the moon passes between us and the sun. And so it's called a solar eclipse because the sun, or solar, is being blocked. Uh, there are two different types of eclipses. There are solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. A lunar eclipse is when the Earth passes through, sorry, excuse me, when the moon passes through the Earth's shadow. A solar eclipse is when the Earth passes through the moon's shadow. Uh, just so you know, lunar eclipses only occur at full moon, whereas solar eclipses only occur at new moon. And the phase of the moon refers to where the moon is in its orbit around the sun, or in its orbit around the Earth, excuse me. Okay, next question comes from Mrs. Spiller's class. Why can't it hurt your eyes? So, today is not a special day. The sun can hurt your eyes on any day of the year. And what's happening is the sunlight is entering your eyes and you have a little lens here at the opening of your eye that brings the light from the sun to a focus, to a point. And that point hits the back of your eye, something we call a retina. The retina is composed of rods and cones. These are biological sensors to light, a lot like the digital pixels on your digital camera. Well, it's made of flesh, just like uh, the rest of your body is. And with that much light from the sun focusing on the back of your eyeballs, it will literally start cooking them. Uh, and so that's why it's dangerous to stare at the sun, focusing that much light onto the retina for that long of a period of time. So this could happen on any given day. So why do we warn you about today? Well, today, is going to be unlike anything you've ever seen before. When you look at the sun on a normal day, it's the sun, it's there. Rises every day, sets every day. But today, when you look at the sun, there's going to be a piece of it missing as the moon is passing in front of it. And that's unusual. And you're going to want to stare. And that's when trouble happens. Uh, so that's why we urge you to use uh, protective glasses, uh, eclipse clown glasses, uh, to look at the sun uh, in um, during the eclipse. You're going to not be able to help yourself from staring, and uh, that's when the damage can occur. You could, for example, say, look real quick and look right back, um, and you'll probably be okay. A way to tell is to close your eyes, and when you close your eyes, if you see an after image of the sun, even though your eyes are closed, that's not a good sign. That means generally that you had too much sunlight Heading your retina. And if you keep that up, uh, you'll have uh, damage to your eyes. What it could do uh, is it actually could leave you permanently blind and give you a blind spot on your eye. So be careful today. Uh, the next question comes from Mrs. Huddock's class. Will you, go, uh, will, will you go blind? The answer is technically you could, but you'd have to stare at the sun for a while, at least a minute. Um, so try not to look at it for more than a split second without protection. Uh, the next question comes from Mrs. Potter's class. Are the stars out when the eclipse happens? Well, the stars are always out. In fact, you just can't see them because the sun's so bright. 
So when the moon blocks the sun, it is possible to see stars, but it has to get really dark. Think about sunset when the sun is just set on the horizon on a normal day. On those days, you can't really see uh, the stars just yet because it's not dark enough. Uh, down in Florida, uh, by uh, where you guys are located, uh, the sun won't be covering all, or the moon won't be covering all of the sun, only part of the sun. And so it'll still be pretty bright out and you're not going to be able to see stars. On the other hand, uh, there is a path of something called totality where you're completely in the moon's shadow. That's where the moon has completely blocked the sun. So, for example, that's starting today in Oregon uh, and then proceeding through the, mid, uh, the west like Wyoming, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, on its way to Missouri, Kansas City, and St. Louis through Nashville, Tennessee, on its way through the east coast at uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, so there, along that path of totality, as it's called, the sun will be completely blocked by the moon. And for those couple of minutes, which is where I'm going to be today, you will be able to see the stars in the middle of the day. Uh, it'll get a little bit cooler. Uh, the birds will start tripping because they think it's time for night. Uh, it'll be an interesting uh, experience for me to have. The next class comes from a uh, question comes from Mrs. Huddock's class. Um, if you put seven pairs of sunglasses on, on, are your eyes okay? Well, the typical eclipse sunglasses uh, or eclipse glasses block 99,999 particles of light, which we call photons, out of every 100,000. Uh, so that's so another way to think about that is 99.999% of the light gets blocked. So that you are able to just see safely the 0.001% of sunlight that gets through. In the case of a regular pair of sunglasses, that lets through about 10% of the light. So more than a thousand times, 10,000 times more than the eclipse glasses do. Now let's say you had two of those sunglasses and the first pair let through 10% and the next pair only let through 10% of that. Well, that's 1% of the starlight that's still getting through. That's still enough to damage your eyes. So not good enough. Let's say you have three pairs. So the first pair lets through 10%. The second pair lets through 10% of the sunlight of that. And the third pair lets through 10% of that. Well, that's still 0.1% of the sunlight. And you need to go another 100 times. Now, seven pairs of sunglasses, you might be okay with seven pairs of sunglasses. Uh, it won't block all the UV radiation as well as you'd like it to. Uh, and that's some of the most damaging stuff. Uh, so I don't recommend it. Also, it's a little hard to keep seven pairs of sunglasses on your face unless you've got them all taped up in a funny contraption. But good luck. There are other easier ways to view the eclipse if you don't have eclipse glasses. You can take two pieces of paper, put one on the ground, and with the other one, poke a small hole in it. This is called a pinhole camera. And basically, the little bit of sunlight that gets through that hole will cast an image onto the piece of paper on the ground. If you hold the first piece of paper a couple feet off the ground and watch the ray of light go through, you can actually see an image of the sun on the second piece of paper. And that's a nice, safe way to look at the eclipse. Next question from Mrs. McIntosh's class. Does a solar eclipse happen on other planets? That's a great question. So what's special about our solar eclipse is that we have a moon. So the only places we can have solar eclipses on other planets would be if that planet has a moon. So Mercury doesn't have any moons. Venus doesn't have any moons. Earth, as you know, has the, our one uh, natural satellite moon. Um, and Mars has two, Phobos and Deimos. Uh, and then if you go out to the outer planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they have dozens, up to 80 moons apiece. Uh, which is a remarkable number of moons, right? So yes, eclipses do happen on other planets. And in fact, we've seen them. So a number of years ago, the Mars rovers uh, happened to notice that Phobos, uh, one of the moons of Mars, Phobos or Deimos, was passing between um, the sun and uh, where it was located on Mars. And so it witnessed an eclipse on Mars. That was pretty cool. Um, similarly, when we look at Jupiter with powerful telescopes on the ground, Sometimes you can actually see the shadows of those moons passing across the surface of Jupiter. So basically that point on the surface of Jupiter is experiencing a Jovian eclipse of the sun. 
Um, another thing that I study is I look for planets around other stars. And so what we're actually looking for, in some cases we see them because we watch the brightness of the star. And if a planet orbiting that star, something we call an exoplanet, happens to pass between us and that star, we'll see a dip in the brightness of the star as a function of time. And that's basically an eclipse, not with our sun, but with another star. And so we've actually used that technique to find over 1,500 planets around other stars. So not eclipses in our solar system, but eclipses around other stars. Next question comes from Mrs. Spiller's class. Why does an eclipse only happen once in a while? That's a great question. Eclipses happen once every six months, both a solar and a lunar eclipse, roughly every six months. And there's a reason for that. Uh, the moon goes around the Earth about once a month, hence the word month. It has the root of moon in it. That's where the origins of the month came from. It came from the orbit of the moon around the Earth. So once a month, you would think that the moon would pass between us and the sun, causing a solar eclipse, but it doesn't. Uh, the reason it only happens once every six months is because the moon travels an inclination of about five degrees, an angle of about five degrees when it orbits, um, when it orbits the Earth. So in order for us to have a solar or lunar eclipse, the Earth, the moon, and the sun all have to be in a line. But most times of the year, what happens is if you imagine my face here is the sun, and my finger here is the moon, most of the time the moon goes above or below. And so the shadow of the moon doesn't hit the Earth. And so there's no solar eclipse. It's only twice a year when all of them are lined up that the shadow passes across the Earth and we get a solar eclipse. Now that shadow is not very big. The moon is about four times smaller uh, than the Earth. So the shadow is only a pretty small part on the surface of the Earth, only a little over 150 miles wide. Um, and the Earth is 70% covered in water. So 70% of the time, those solar eclipses don't even hit land. So that's why they're rare. They happen once every six months, but they hit a random part of the Earth every six months. And so we end up with the situation where most of the time we don't see them. Now, in the case of the United States, we haven't had an eclipse like this in 99 years. And what do I mean by that is that an eclipse that starts on the West Coast and ends on the East Coast. We've had lots of partial solar eclipses where the moon partially covers the sun. Uh, and we've had total solar eclipses that have gone across the shadows, passed across part of the United States. So the last total solar eclipse where the moon completely blocked the sun that happened to where the shadow of the moon hit the earth was in 1979. There was another one in 1970 and one in the 1960s. So it's been a while. So it's pretty exciting. And that's why they sometimes call this a once in a lifetime event because it only happens to hit where you live once in a lifetime, the shadow of the moon on the earth. Uh, one other fun fact about that um, is that the next one is we're, we're lucky. There's going to be another one in about seven years in 2024, passing through most of the United States again. Uh, and so we'll have another opportunity, if you miss this one, if it's cloudy today, to catch it again in seven years. Uh, the next and last question comes from both Mrs. McIntosh and Mrs. Potter's classes. How long will a solar eclipse last? Well, what causes a solar eclipse is the moon passing in front of the sun with respect to where we are viewing it on the Earth. And so it has to do with the relative speeds of the Earth and the moon as the moon orbits the Earth and the Earth wobbles too. Um, and long story short, it lasts just under three hours. From, so from the start when the moon first hits the sun, viewed from our position, to the other side, that lasts just under three hours, about two hours and 45 minutes. Now the peak where the moon blocks the most of the sun, that's pretty quick. Uh, it's going to last maybe 15 minutes to half an hour. So don't miss it today, uh, later this afternoon. Uh, between 2.30 and 3 p.m. Well, if you have any further questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Good luck and enjoy the eclipse today. Thank you.